Hey there, Evan Ettinger here. Welcome to my kitchen. Thank you so much for joining me today. For more of a detailed look on the kitchen, the flat tour video will be up in actually the next month. I've actually filmed it, just gotta edit it. But today, you're in my kitchen for one good reason. We're gonna be making some green bean casserole. This is absolutely the star dish of every American's Thanksgiving. And if they say it's a different one, it's because they're lying. Green bean casserole is the unsung hero, the best dish at Thanksgiving by far. However, the one negative about it, oh, upsets me to my core. It's pretty much only eaten during Thanksgiving. So it's basically like a one time a year type thing, even though it's so good and even worse in the UK, they don't even know what it is. Tragic, I know, and I'm gonna change that right here right now. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you how to make your own green bean casserole completely from scratch. We're gonna be riffing off of some recipes online from Babish, Alton Brown, and adding my little spin to it to make it a bit more British friendly. So without further ado, let's get cooking. Now this recipe for green bean casserole requires quite a few ingredients, but don't get scared. It's honestly pretty easy. Let's go. For this dish, the best part of it is the French fried onions. One of my favorite parts of this dish is that it's basically like three dishes that you combine into a casserole dish and the whole is better than the sum of its parts, okay? So we're gonna need brown onions, white onions, just get a nice amount. We're gonna be slicing them pretty darn finely. Just like that. I think I cut onions different than most people. I think the rule of thumb is you shouldn't chop off the ends because that way you can, you know, keep it together, but I can never keep it together. Onions are like, Photoshop layers, okay? My name's Chef. After your onions are properly chopped up, you're next going to throw them into a big bowl and cover them with about a cup or more of buttermilk. However, buttermilk is actually quite hard to get in the UK. I've had it before, but most times I end up having to make it myself. It's actually quite simple. Just use a cup or so of whole milk and then add some lemon milk to it. Lemon milk? <laughs> That's actually a font. Add some lemon juice to it and give it a nice mixing. If you can get buttermilk, I do highly recommend that. Now, every online video I've seen about making your own buttermilk using this lemon juice method, they always show after 15 minutes, the milk like warbles on top. I'm like, wow, that actually worked. I've never once gotten it to do that. I do it at this point because I'm, I'm just hoping it tastes a little bit better making it that buttermilk style. Either way, we're gonna let this sit for 15 minutes before adding the onions to the bowl. And so while we're waiting for that to happen, we're going to continue on with the rest of the prep. So I'm gonna be putting a bit of a handful of flour onto a little plate. This is gonna be used to douse the soaked onions for later. Set that aside. Next up, we're going to be grabbing our baby portobello mushrooms. Now these are gonna be used for the cream of mushroom soup, which is essentially, whoop, the second dish in this three-in-one dish. Baby portobellas are a lot easier to get in the UK than cremini mushrooms, which is the original mushrooms that this recipe calls for, but I'm fairly certain they're very similar in taste profile. And once you've sliced your roughly 250 grams of baby portobello mushrooms, you're going to be adding them to another plate to sit and wait until it's their turn to shine. All right, our milk has supposedly become buttermilk. I don't know, it looks a little bit chunkier. You be the judge. Next up, we're going to be adding all of our freshly sliced onions to the bowl. Now, if you look, the bowl size I used was definitely the best possible size. Why don't we flip this? I'll put it into this bowl. <laughs> Think smart, not hard. <laughs> the goal is to make sure that every onion is soaked in this buttermilk, and we're gonna let him do that for 15 minutes. The waiting is annoying at first, but well worth the effort. Now, as we all know, idle hands go to the deviled eggs amongst us. And so while these onions are soaking up that buttermilk, we're gonna prepare the green beans, which is the third dish in this three-in-one dish. It's quite simple. All we need to do essentially is lay out your green beans, trim the ends off and chop them into about one to two inch pieces. When you're chopping the green beans, they don't have to all be the exact same size. Just eyeball it, bean there, done that. Sorry, I, I doubt you guys are arguing in the comments. I bet you agreeing with me. Agreeing? Agree? Okay. Listen, you guys are enabling me. You definitely have a casserole to play, okay? <laughs> and as with every other step we've been prepping here, once you're done chopping up the green beans, we're gonna be placing them in a bowl. Until Gondor calls for aid, we're just going to put them to the side. And one final little bit of prep we can do before the onions are finished, peel the garlic. I absolutely hate peeling garlic. I know there's a lot of techniques out there, but my technique is just kind of chop off the very end and then hold it down and twist. And it peels off some sometimes, so it's actually, it's all right. All right, next up, after you change your camera angle, it's time to add some canola oil or rapeseed oil to your cast iron skillet. This is for frying 
the French fried onions. Now as an important note, please be cautious when you are heating up large amounts of oil. Don't do anything silly. Just make sure it's an amount so that all of the onions are covered in the oil and make sure the oil is about 160 degrees Celsius. If you don't have a cooking thermometer, primarily used to making sure that your meats are cooked perfectly well, I highly recommend it. I'll put a link in the description for the one I use. Honestly, amazing. You just boop, pop it open, stick it in, make sure that the temperature is exactly what you want. Obviously not yet, I just turned it on. Now, while we have the oil heating up back there, let's do it. We gotta strain our onions. Goodbye, oniony flavored buttermilk. You've already prepared some flour for some reason on a separate thing. And add it in there, time to toss that boy. Isn't he beautiful? And once your onions are adequately floured, we're going to add them, there we go, to our pot of oil. And once your fried onions are truly looking crispy, time to scoop these boys out, put them on to a paper towel lined plate to collect the excess oil. Pro tip, be sure to add a nice amount of kosher salt. I always throw it in anyway. Just a small amount of MSG makes these things just irresistible. All right, we're gonna set these onions aside. It's time to cook the cream of mushroom soup. We're gonna take a big old spoonful of butter and we're going to put it in our saucepan. Oh, I, oh, this was really close. Actually, I sliced these finely. The recipe actually calls for them to be diced. Evan can't read a basic recipe. As usual, we got a small pinch of kosher salt to draw out the moisture. All right, looks like all the moisture has just left the mushrooms, so we're going to be adding a tablespoon of flour there. That was quite a heap. Now, this is to make some sort of mushroomy roux, I suppose you could say. There we go, look at that. We're gonna load up the garlic press with our garlics there, and we're just gonna, boom. Oh, that's nice, that's nice. Deglazed the pan, little for him. Mm. Little for me. And now we need a cup and a half of stock. Now, luckily for you, I made myself some chicken stock last night. This one actually is the recipe from Joshua Weissman. Nice amount of chicken stock there. And lastly, we also need to have a cup of double cream is what we call it in the UK. The recipe calls for heavy cream, double cream. There you go, you learned something today. Heavy, double, boil in trouble. Boom. You always season as you go. Always make sure to give it a couple good grinds of black pepper. Now the recipe calls for a small dash of soy sauce. And just cause I'm adding a little bit of flair to this, I'm gonna be adding a small amount of Henderson's relish. Anyone in the North, you know what's up. Henderson's Relish. It's like Worcester sauce, but Northster sauce. <laughs> I think the flavors of both of those together should complement this dish. Also, towards the end, I'm going to be adding just a little bit of lemon. I feel like lemon juice and soup make a lot of sense. Just to adding a little bit of acidity. So now our cream of mushroom soup has basically come to a little of a boil. We're going to turn it down just a little bit, make sure it simmers for the next 20 minutes. Meanwhile, we can now work on cooking our green beans. The green beans in the green bean casserole. Hard boiling them, two minutes in boiling water, and then we're gonna follow up with a quick ice bath to stop the beans from cooking. Oh, and somehow I always forget this. Let's preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius for fan assisted, you know. Does anyone not have a fan oven in the UK? I feel like every recipe is like 180 or 170 fan, but I just put it at 180 either way, you know. It's not hurt me so far. I love the wind chime sounds of my pots. <laughs> my pots and pans. And we're actually gonna make sure the water is just a little salted. Why not? Oh boy. Have another one of these. Oh my God. Oh. All right, green beans are done, let's do it. And then as soon as we're finished straining these boys, we're gonna pop them immediately into our pre-prepared ice bath. Stop cooking, sirs, good to go. Meanwhile, if we look over here, oh yes, our cream of mushroom soup is like a minute away. And finally, it's time to compile the casserole. Just putting the beans all straight in there. They're so crispy. Take half of these bad boys, and we're gonna put them inside, and then, here we go. Oh yes, oh yes indeed, that looks so good. Mixing this bad boy up. Oh my gosh, oh that smells so nice. Just adding a tiny hit of lemon, and that is a green bean casserole, kind of. The best part now is making sure the entirety of the top is covered in fried onions. Gotta be absolutely covered. And that, my friends, is going in the oven covered for 20 minutes. Yes, my sweets. 
Let us see. Oh, nice and bubbly. Amazing, amazing. I am so excited to get some of this. And without further ado, let's dig in. Oh, piping fresh out the oven. Nice and crispy onions on the sides. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm so excited for this. I, listen, this is phenomenal. This tastes exactly as, as I wanted it to taste. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. The soup is so incredibly thick and creamy. The fried onions are, oh my God. They're just so crispy and they're just adding that texture to the whole thing. The beans are the perfect, perfect amount of cooked. I, I feel like I always overcook the beans. This is genuinely a 10 out of 10 for me. Please, if you get a chance, Follow this recipe, try and make yourself a green bean casserole, but I highly recommend you make this for yourself. Even though you might not celebrate Thanksgiving, you deserve to have tried Thanksgiving's best dish. Thanks for watching. If you'd like, I might make more videos like this in the future, so it depends on your feedback. Tell me what your thoughts on this. Other than that, I guess you can watch a different related video. I make everything. I'm a variety man. I'll see you next Sunday. Goodbye. I made a green bean casserole. Hopefully you like this, didn't think I was an a-hole.